Welcome to Compound 50, Introduction to Programming. This is our first lecture. Uh, let me start with uh, just a basic introduction about the course. Probably this lecture will be shorter than, than other lectures, but let's start. So my name is Igor Shinkar. I'm the course instructor. This is my email, igor.shinkar at gmail.com. The course will be online asynchronous, which means I will post the lectures on the YouTube channel. You watch the videos and you do the assignments and you do the practice questions. Uh, if you have any questions for you, you can, you can email me. There will also be office hours. I will announce the exact details about office hours. The office hours probably will be over Zoom. For the homeworks. So for homeworks, there will be five programming assignments roughly every two weeks. Uh, starting week three or so, I will, I will, or week two, I will give the first assignment. Uh, the midterm will be around week six or seven. There will be a final. All the announcements will be on Blackboard. Uh, for grading, let's say the scheme is final 30%, midterm 20%, and homework will have five assignments, each worth 10% for the final grade. Okay, so here's what you learn in this course. So one thing you learn is to write code in Python. So already after this lecture, you'll be able to write some code in Python. Uh, what does it mean? You will know what are variables, conditions, loops, functions, lists, strings, uh, what's the difference between print and return? You will know what are classes and so on. So you will learn some basic algorithms such as searching and sorting. Uh, we might learn some basic data structures. It depends on the pace. Frankly, this is the first time I'm teaching this course, so it's not clear exactly uh, to me what's the pace, but you know, we'll figure this out together. Uh, prerequisites. So I think the prerequisites are understanding basic principles of math, something like pre-calculus or similar, but otherwise I will make no assumptions about your programming experience. So basically we'll start from scratch. Okay, so I have the slide question so far because you know I use it when the course is, when the course is in person, but you know, it will give you time to take a small break. Okay, let's start. Uh, let me make a small computer science review. So we'll start with this notion of an algorithm. So what's an algorithm? Algorithms are the core components of programming. So an algorithm is a sequence of instructions or maybe a recipe for solving a problem. For example, if I want to make pancakes, I will take two eggs, I will break them into a bowl, then I'll take a cup of flour, I'll add them to the bowl, uh, then I'll take uh, I don't know, two cups of milk, I'll add it, I'll mix all of them, I'll add two spoons of sugar, I'll mix it all, um, I don't know, I'll put oil on a frying pan. When it gets warm, I will put uh, the mixture onto the frying pan. So this is a sequence of instructions, right? And in the end, when I see that that it's uh, the pancakes look nice, you know, I'll put them on a the plate. So this is the sequence of instruction. We'll have exactly the same thing for algorithms. And that's the way we communicate. Uh, we, so, Given an algorithm, we want to communicate this uh, to a computer. We do it using a programming language. And in this case, the programming language will be Python. So here's how it works. In Python, we have an algorithm. We write it as a program in a, in a, fi in a file called file.py, and then we run this program. And we'll have an interpreter that runs the instructions, one instruction at a time. So a typical program looks something like this. Okay. Uh, for the programming environment. So for this course, I will use PyCharm. So, so the term is IDE, Integrated Development Environment. Uh, basically, this is the programming environment. This is where we write the code, and this is where we run the code. Um, if you don't like PyCharm for some reason, you can use any other IDE. I have no... Uh, I will not insist on that, really your preferences. But in our lectures, I will use PyCharm. You can download PyCharm and use it for writing code. Uh, in the lectures, I will give you problems and you should try solving them, okay? So in general, the more you practice, uh, the better, okay? So really the only way to learn how to program is practice. There's no other way to do it. You will not learn it for, by looking at me writing code or, or right, looking at someone else writing code. You should really practice. 
for the assignments, I will give the exact instruction, but basically you will also need to submit code. So I should say that there are all sorts of online compilers. For example, there is this Replit. Uh, I guess it's okay to use it, but I don't really recommend it. I recommend using an actual ID on your laptop. Okay. Uh, so before we continue, let me show you uh, what PyCharm looks like. So I have some program here. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it does exactly, but this is our code. So all this is the code. This is the list of files. If we want to run it, there is run, there is debug. Debug means uh, we want to run the program step-by-step. Step. I will tell you all this. There is this button that says run and so on. So let me tell you how to open a new project. So to open a new project, we do new project. Let's call it lecture one. Uh, let's say we we'll open it in new window. Okay, so when we open it in, in new window, We okay, so we created a new project and there's file main.py that already seems to do something. Let me let me just erase this file and create a new one. So there should be a delete button here somewhere. Okay, delete. Uh, now I would like to create a new file. And this file will be called, let's say hello. Why? Because our first programming language will, will be called hello world. And how will we write it? So in Python, it's very easy to write hello world. This is how we write it. Or we can use double quotation marks instead of single quotation marks. So basically print is the name of the function used to write to the screen and hello world in parentheses is what we, is this, we put the string that we want to print to the screen. So let's, let's try to do it together. Okay, I'll write I'll do new Python file. We call it hello. So now the file is empty. And I want to write print hello world. Let me write a capital letter here. So this is our first program. And let me add comments. So how do we make comments? We write this shark, right? So it's shift three, uh, printing hello world. So this is our program. How do we run it? Uh, so here it says run main, but our file is hello. So we go to this run, we choose hello, and then we run it. And in the console, we'll see hello world. Okay. So this is our first program. Uh, we can use double quotation marks and it will do exactly the same thing so when we run it so now it says run hello so shift 10 works it prints hello world twice so first time this line second time this line okay so this is our very first example Okay, so this is our hello world. Let's try more examples. Uh, let me introduce a variable. So what's a variable? Let me call a variable s and it will call the string called uh, one string. And I can print this s. So what's going on here? So this is the string, it's called one string. I have a variable called s and this equal assigns one string into S. So S is the name of the variable and we assign this string into S. And then when we print S, can you guess what happens? Yeah, it will print one string, right? So here it prints one string. 
Uh, how about we'll have another variable called another string. We'll call this variable t and we'll do print t. Can you guess what happens then? Yeah, it will print another string. Okay, so we can print either like this, right? Print another string or we can just put t and it will do exactly the same thing. Okay. So this is how we, we assign strings. Um, so these are our first examples. Right? And this is how we declare variables. So uh, for now, the variables that we saw, we saw held strings, but we can also hold numbers. We can hold integers. Uh, we can hold real numbers, so they don't have to be five. They, have, they can be 1.5 or minus 0 0.3. They can also be Boolean, meaning hold true or false, and notice that they start with a capital letter. Uh, let's try to play with this a bit. Okay, so we'll have x equals five. And if I want to print X, what will it print? You know, after hello world, it will print five. Okay. And if I assign F equals minus 0 0.3, sorry, Y equals minus 0 0.3, if I try to try to print this, it will print minus 0 0.3. Okay. Uh, so these are, several examples that we have. Uh, I can do something like this. So what does it do? It assigns the value of X into S. Or sorry, let, let's not call it X, let's call it Z. And what happens when we print Z? Print well, I guess five. Why does it print five? Because X was five, right? So here, here, the next one is printing five. Okay. Uh, I would like to show you what's de what debugging does. So for debugging, I'll press uh, the button, I don't know, let's say here in the very beginning, and then I'll go to debug hello, or I can use this little bug. And when I do, here's what happens. It doesn't work. Ah, it does work, good. Okay, so, I have all these buttons here, step over, step into, so we'll do step over. So that's F8. I'll press this button, it will do the first line. Then it will do the second line. So let me put in the console. Uh, when I go to the next line, here's what happens. S becomes three. And in the debugger, I can see that S, sorry, S become one string and I can see in the debugger what's the value of S. So I go, go one more step, it prints in the console, it prints S. Now, when I go to the debugger again and I do the next line, what will happen? A new variable will be created called t and it will be another string. Right now I print it. What happens when I'm here? So when I set x equals five, another variable will appear here, it's called x. Ah, x is five and it says here the type of x is int and the type of s and t are strings. Right, so when I print it in the console, we'll see this five. When I do this y equals minus 0 0.3, there will be another variable. And now its type will be float minus 0 0.3. Okay, and then I print it. What happens when I do z equals x? When I run this line, I get another variable, just gets the value five, right? Just copies the value from x into z. So this is very convenient. Okay, so please see this part of the lecture again. 
uh, to make sure that you you see you are, uh, understand how to do debugging, and always try to do it yourself. Please, please practice everything that we do. Okay, so that's it. That's the end of the program. Okay, uh, how about I do one more line? I assign s to be x sets. So previously, I will just remind you. S was a string and assigns uh, the value of X into S. That means sets S equal five. Uh, you know, let's try to run the debugger on this again. I will create all this, so we create S. So here's what happens in this line. So look at S, S was a string, but when I do this line, ah, what happened? Uh, let me try it again. S previously was a string and now it became an int. Okay, and when I print S, now S becomes, well, that's another five. But in general, we should not do that. Uh, do not do it. Uh, it is confusing uh, when we change the type of the variable. So if S was a string before, let's keep it a string. Okay, let's not change it from a string type. It's possible to do in Python, but let's agree that we usually don't do it. Okay. So this was our first example. Okay, so we said we declare all these variables. Uh, S is a string, we can declare it as an int, as a real number. At some point, we'll see example with true for you can try true false. Okay. And here is another nice thing you can know what's the name of the variable using the command type. Okay. Let's try using the command type. Um, where should we go? For example, if we write here type X and we try to debug it. Okay, we print in the console x equals five. So we wrote the five. When we print the type, hmm, nothing happened. Why do you think nothing happened? Okay, so now we print y, y is printed, that's minus 0 0.3, but why did nothing happen here? So the reason is the following. Nothing happened here because we need to print the type. Just writing type will not print it. It simply says, you know, tells you the value, but it doesn't print it. If you want to actually see the value, we should print it. So let's print the value of the type of X and the type of Y and we'll see what's happening. Okay, we go to, all right, so we print another string. Now we have X equals five, we print X. And now we print the type of X. So the type of X, it says, well, it says class, Okay, so basically it says int is int corresponds to an integer. And when we print the type of y, the type of y is float. Okay, and when we print z, it will be the same type as x, I suppose. Uh, here is a homework for you. Uh, homework, try printing the type of S and see what you are getting. So this was our very first example, okay? So I will put this code uh, 
somewhere online so that you can use it. I hope that you find this helpful. Okay, that was declaring variables. This is our first example. For our second example, let me talk a bit about strings. So we talked a bit about strings. And for strings, we can sort of manipulate strings. Let's try to do it together. Okay, so I will go back to our coding environment. I'll create another new Python file. I will call it strings.strings. It will create a file called strings.py. And if you're curious where these files are here, it says here, it, for me, it's under users, Igor, PyCharm projects, lecture one. So lecture one is the name of our project. And I guess PyCharm projects is where all the projects are. All right. Uh, let's try a simple example. Okay, so we'll have something like str1 will be hello. str2 will be world. Notice we can use either single quotation or double quotations, both are fine. And concatenate will be a string that takes the two strings and concatenates them. And then I want to print concat. So what do you think will be printed when we do this? Well, let's try it. Uh, I do run, and then I choose strings. Oh, it prints hello world, but there's uh, no space between them. How do we fix it? So one way to fix it is this way. Okay, so when I, when I do it now, here you go, it prints hello world. Uh, how about we do another way to concatenate the strings? is the follow. We'll call it say S1 equals S2 will be this and S3 will be and maybe you know what S4 will be just the exclamation. And then we'll take uh, I don't know Concat two will be S one plus S two plus S three plus S four, and then we'll do print concat two. When I run it, another way to concatenate the strings printing this one, and concat two prints this. And how about we make it even nicer? We'll now that we understand how concat works. Uh, we'll do something like this. So what this does, let's say here, one string is called concat two equals, the other is whatever we created. And notice this is the name of the variable and this is just the string inside the quotation marks. Okay, so these are not the same thing. This is treated simply as whatever the letters are there, it just prints it. Uh, right, is equal to, and this is the actual name of the variable. Okay, so let's try. Yeah, this works. Okay, so it prints concat is equal to hello world. And if we want to put quotation marks, then we can even do this. And the rule is if the outer quotations are single quotation inside, we can put double quotation marks. Okay, so now these double quotation marks are also printed. Nice. Oh, yeah. And while we're here, uh, so we can not only can we add strings, but we can also multiply strings. So, for example, uh, we can write S1 times T, and then we'll print uh, this. Of this mold S1. And 
And what will happen? So here's what happens. Run it again. So I run uh, using Shift F10, but make sure the name of the file is the correct name of the file. So what happens when we run it, uh, we get S1 multiplied three times, which means S1 plus S1 plus S1, okay? So S1 is HE, so we get <laughs> okay. So this is how, uh, how we manipulate strings. So we can add strings and we can multiply strings. Okay. So that's, uh, that's another example. So here we did the concatenate string. So this shows one example and we'll have, we'll have a bunch of other examples in the file. And again, I will share all these files with you so you are able to, to see it and, and try them yourselves. Okay, so please make sure you run all this code, you run each example separately, you see what's going on there. Okay, so Python is also good for doing math. For example, I don't know, we can have variables three and four, and we can say a plus b is equal to a plus b. So a plus b will be the name of the variable, and it gets assigned the value of a plus the value of b. So when we print it, what do you think will happen? Yeah, so a is 3, b is 4. So a plus b will be 7. When we print, it will print 7. And we'll also try to compare two numbers, and let's see the file called math.py. OK. So we're going to to our code again. We create a new file and we call it, let's call it math. Uh, yeah, will be the name. Sure, we'll call it math.py. Okay. And here is what we're going to do. Two variables. So these are the comments A and B. So we'll have A equals three and B equals four. And then we'll have something like sum is equal to A plus B, or maybe we'll call it A plus B. Okay, and then we'll try to print A plus B. And Let's see exactly what happens. Let's actually do it with debugging. Okay, so we'll do debug. We'll choose math. Yeah, so here's our debugger. So when we run the first line, second. So for the first line, a is equal three. For the second line, b is equal four, it creates another variable, b equals four. When we write a plus b, what happens? It declares a new variable called a plus b, and the value here is seven. When we print to console, it simply prints seven. Okay, so if we run it, it prints seven. Okay. Right. Let me create another variable called sum of squares, and it will be a times a plus b times b. So this is exactly sum of squares. You know, I take a squared, I take b squared, and I take your sum. Uh, so what do you think will be, will be printed here? Well, one thing I should tell you uh, is that, you know, multiplication comes before addition and Python actually uh, respects this rule. So basically it will assign, you know, three times three plus four times four, that's nine plus 16 equals 25. So this will print 25. Let's try. Yeah, that indeed prints 25. That's great. Mm -hmm. Let's try another example. Maybe we'll take y equals 0 0.1. So the type of y will not be an integer, but it will be a float. And it will print y. Uh, and let's say we take z to be y times 10. 
and we'll print that. Right. So what do you think uh, will be, so when we print Y, it will print 0 0.1, but when we print Z, what do you think it will print? Will it print one? Well, because 0 0.1 times 10 is one. Well, actually it prints 1.0. And the reason is uh, when we multiply by flow, the type becomes flow. Mm -hmm. If we want to change it to int, uh, we can write it like this. So we write, you know, treat z as int. And when we print z2, or let me not, okay, for now, let me call it z2. This will print just one, not 1.0. Okay, so uh, convert z into. So let me call it Z bit. Okay. So that's another example. Okay, here is one more thing I would like to do. I would like to write not sim for example, uh, for example here. Uh, or let's say it here. I would like to write y is equal to, you know, to the value of y. So here's what I want to do. y is equal to plus y, something like this. But if I try to run it, oh, it says something is wrong with this line. So it says print, you can only concatenate str to str, not float. So what it says here is, look, this is a string and I don't know how to add it to a float. So in order to convert it to a string, you take this variable y, you convert it to a string. And now you can concatenate the two things. So now we'll say y equals 0 0.1. And same thing here, we'll say z is equal to plus strz. And int is equal to str int. Let's try to run these three. So here's what we Okay, that's that's your one more example. Okay. So this is our third example. Uh, let's try another example and it will be called, uh, okay, Python file read input. And I will tell you in a second what it is. So let me close all these files that we don't need anymore. And in fact, let me call them in read input one because we'll have read input two. So for read input, here is what I want, what I want to do. I want to uh, read, so here's what we're going to do. Read the name of the user, uh, that will be one thing. Okay. For now, I'm sort of writing what I want to do. Say, uh, hello uh, to the user. Ask what is their favorite book, reply to that as well. Okay, just reply to that. So here is how we're going to read the name of the user. So we're going to store this into a variable called name. And here's what we're going to say. We're going to ask, what is your name? And what will happen? The user will need to type his to type their name, his or her name on the on in the console. And this will be stored into name. And then we'll want to print something like hello. And then the name of the user. So notice we already know what this means. Hello, this is one string, name will be another string and you can cut in two. Okay. Uh, 
what is your favorite book? And maybe we'll reply something like, uh, I like book as well. And notice the space in the beginning and the end so that there is a space between these. Let's see what happens on the run. So when we run it, we choose run, and then we have read input one. Oh, it says, what's your name? So how to reply, I'll put Igor. It says, hello, Igor, what's your favorite book? I don't know, Harry Potter. I don't know, some book, some Harry Potter book, for example. And it replies, I like Harry Potter as well. So one small thing after the, the, the question mark, there is no space. So maybe it's nice to put a space here and a space there. But otherwise, here is your example, right? So input, it, it waits for the user to write something and stores it in main. And here, uh, we print it, right? We print hello and concatenate the two strings and do exactly the same thing with the book. Okay, that's example one. Let me do example two, A new Python file. We'll call it uh, read input two. Uh, so here's what we'll do. Read the radius of a circle. Compute the area of the circle. So how do we read the radius of a circle? So let's say we call it R. And uh, please enter the radius of the office circle. Okay, so a user as R here. And then we want to compute the area. So the area will be something. And then we want to print the area. So the question, first we need to remember what's the formula for the ready for the area. So it's pi times r times r. Oh, but the, before that we need to know what's pi. So pi is let's say 3.14159 something. Uh 265. Okay. So it seems to be fine, right? So we read the area. And then we have pi, so right, so remember, pi is, is a float. And we compute the area by writing pi times r times r, and then we print the area. So let's try to run it. Ah, it runs the wrong one. Why? Because again, I need to go to run and tell it, look, now I have a new file, this read input two. Okay, the area of a circle, I don't know, let's say two. Oh no something terrible happened. It crashed, it said, can't multiply sequence by non-int of type float. So let me tell you what's going on here. So R is of type str. Okay, so let's try to do it together. If we go to debug mode, um, yeah, what's the area, let's say, what's the radius, let's say three. So R is of type str, okay? So this line will be fine, but then when we try to multiply pi by a string, well, you know, nothing can happen. It just doesn't work. So we need to convert R from str from a string into a float. So here is how we do it. Convert R into a or R float will hold the float value of R. Okay, so let's try it now. I'll write four. Still doesn't work, right? Because here I forgot to write it as a float. And now it works.
So again, this is a string. Uh, I can do it even nicer. Radius is equal to R. And remember, this R is a string. And area is the area. So if we try it now, and now it doesn't print because area is not of type string. So the point is, uh, let me try to do it. Let me do it into separate lines. That uh, here R is a string and area is a float. So we need to convert or cast area into a string. And here we don't need to do anything because R is already a string. So when radius is three, the area will be 28.8. Um, I'm sort of not happy with the naming. I would like for the naming, let's call it R STR and this will be STR. I think this is better. So here the float needs to be converted. Interesting. Okay. That's your and circle. So that's your another example. Give me one second, I'll try to see tells me if I forgot anything. Okay, let's try to do it again with types. Uh, I would like to know what's the, the type of R is What I'm going to do now. Um, remember, we use this type. So we'll do a debug. We'll do debug here. I don't know what happened. What are the horrible things that happened here? Forgot to close parentheses and then everything is wrong. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, please enter the radius of a circle. I don't know, let's say three. So RSTR is a string that has three. And when we print this line in the console, we'll see that the RSTR is really a string. And when we print, you know, the type of R, it's a float, just as we expect. So we can multiply pi by R by R, but we cannot multiply a number by a string, right? It just, well, from this side, it doesn't make sense. Certainly if not, if it's not, a, a, if it's not intuitive, right? So we said there was previous an example where we can multiply a string several times, but not by 3.14, it just doesn't work. Okay. And here is the area. When radius is three, the area is 28.27. Okay. That's our next example. So let me show one more example in math. Uh, yeah, let me maybe create another file. Now what? Uh, compare numbers. 
So here's a Hilderian compare numbers. Uh, we're comparing numbers uh, using if statement. So let's say we have a equals three and b equals four. And here's what I would like to do. I would like to ask which of the numbers is larger, three or four. So here's the way to do it. If a is equal to b, uh, I, I will first write something and then a is greater than b. So here is the syntax. If a is greater than b, then write semicolon, uh, then write a colon. So colon means uh, this is what we write after the if statement. Then we do one indentation. So usually I can use a tab to go to to move uh, to move the cursor sort of this many uh, this many cells. I guess it's four cells. Okay. So if a is greater than b, then it will print a greater than b. If a is less than b, I'll print a is smaller than b. And what's the last option? There is one more option. The last option is a equal b. So here is how we check that a is equal b. We don't write just equal, but write equal equal. So equal to b. Uh, equal equal is used to compare uh, two numbers. Okay. So if we run this compare numbers thing, it will say a is smaller than b. Uh, if we put a equals five and we run it, a will be greater than b. And if b equals five and a equals five, then it will write a is equal to b. So change the values and see how it affects the result. Hmm. Okay, so these were sort of first several examples that I thought would be nice to uh, to share with you. Uh, here is a homework for you. You need to go over all these examples, read them line by line, do debugging. Let me do debugging here. Okay. Compare numbers. So for debugging, remember, you first put a breakpoint, and then you actually start there. So if A is greater than B, will we go inside or no? No, because A is not greater than B, right? A is three. So we skip this line. Is A smaller than B? Yes, A is smaller than B. So we'll print this. And if you go to console, indeed it's printed A is smaller than B. What about A equals B? Is it equal? No, it's not equal. So we skip this line as well. And maybe in the end, we'll print down compare. Okay, so let's try it again. Is A greater than B? No. Is A smaller than B? Yes, we go inside. Is A equal to B? No. Down compare. And if you go to console, it printed A smaller than B and then down compare. Mm -hmm. Okay, so these are the examples for today. I would like to finish with a few uh, with, with an assignment for you, okay? So so this is for now, you don't have to submit it, but you need to work on it because please, for next time, you know, it will be important that you know this, okay? That, uh, so here is your first homework. You need to install PyCharm. How do you install PyCharm? You know, you go to Google, you type PyCharm download, you download it, and then you open a new project. And I don't know, you can call it lecture one or you can give it some other nice name. And then you create a file called hello.py that prints hello world. And then try to run. Okay, so we saw in the video how to do it. Please do it yourselves. <laughs> okay, so the next three examples are you know, not things that you need to write. So write a program that reads three numbers from the user, user, and prints the median of the numbers. 
So the median means it's not the maximal number, it's not the minimal, it's the one in the middle. For example, if the input is three, seven, and one, no, one is the minimum, seven is the maximum, three is the median. So it needs to print three. Okay. I will give you a hint how to do it in a minute. Uh, here is another problem that you need to write. So you read a string and you need to, you read a string uh, from the user. And you print the message, your string is, you know, that string. And the last one is, so I think we did something similar with this, you know, asking the user what's your name and then printing hello and the name of the user. And the last one is write a program that reads a number n from the user input and prints n asterisks. So for example, if n is three, we want to print this. And if n is seven, uh, three, four, five, six, seven. This is what we want to print. Okay. Uh, looking at this example, you know, you need to use some sort of if statement, right? Maybe you'll have like three variables that you will read from the input and then you need to know which one goes first. Uh, so let me give you a small hint how to do it. So for example, we have x equals seven and y equals 10. I can also write and x and y equals 10. Oh, sorry, if A is greater than B and X is and X is greater than Y, I'll write it X is greater than Y. And let's say smaller than Y, I will write and X is smaller than Y. Uh, here is exercise for you. Add more uh, possibilities here. Namely, A is greater, smaller than B and X is greater than Y. Uh, also add the possibility that A is greater than B and X is smaller than Y and so on. Uh, and also possibilities with equality. Mm -hmm. So I think using these conditions, you will be able to solve the first one, that, the one that finds the median of, uh, uh, of three numbers. And probably one question you ask, what happens if two of them are equal? You can either assume, so uh, assume the numbers are all different. So that's your homework practice. The most important one, please install uh, PyCharm and, and run all the programs that we wrote. Run all uh, programs that we wrote today and debug them. And then once you, you are comfortable with this, please, write, uh, solve the other programs as well, right? That's all for today, thank you.